Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to all who have gathered here at St. Michael's to celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. Please stand as you are able and together we will pray the St. Thomas Aquinas prayer. Almighty eternal God, behold I have come to the sacrament of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, as one sick to the physician of life. As one unclean to the fountain of mercy, as one blind to the light of eternal brightness, as one poor and needy to the Lord of heaven and earth, I ask therefore for the abundance of your immense generosity, that you may graciously cure my sickness, wash away my defilement, give life to my blindness, enrich my poverty, clothe my nakedness, so that I may receive the prayer of angels, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords, with such reverence and humility, such contrition and devotion, such purity and faith, such purposes and intention as are conducive to the salvation of my soul. Grant, I pray, that I may receive not only the sacrament of the Lord's body and blood, but also the reality of the power of that sacrament. O most gentle God, grant that I may so receive the body of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, which he took from the Virgin Mary, that I may be worthy to be incorporated into his body and to be counted among his mercies. O most loving Father, grant that I may at last gaze forever upon the unveiled face of your beloved Son, whom I await forever. Propose to receive now, but under these species, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen.
of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us prepare our hearts with confidence in God, saying, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters, that I have got great in sin, in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done, and what I have felt to do, through my thoughts, through my thoughts, through my most previous thoughts, therefore I ask for blessing and everything. All the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, to the Lord God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in the honor of the risen Lord, and that what we recently relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, 
came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon many of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an ex explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live in you and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, in my Father, and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Every time I get a chance to come in front of a congregation and share some words, I think pretty hard about what could I possibly say that you might remember and benefit from. And I'm reminded often of the power of words. Notice how we end the first and second reading, the word of the Lord, right? And when I think of the words that I remember in my life and hearkened way back to my early childhood when we were, when I was very young, six, seven years old, my family moved from a, in town, so to speak, out to the country. And uh, our closest neighbors were a retired couple, Herman and Emily Ryer, and of course, I was a little kid and my grandparents were not very close, so they became like grandparents and were referred to as Grandma and Grandpa Ryer. And they were wonderful people and they were excited. I have three brothers and so we were a bunch of little kids, you know, always running up there for something and they did childcare for us, for my parents sometimes. And we're always, are often over to our house for dinner and ours, theirs, and got to know them well. And especially, I'll say, Grandpa Ryer was a, strong influence in my life then and even now. He was a fascinating man because he had a very deliberate, gentle voice, was very focused and calm. And when he said something, he really meant it. The other thing that really grabbed your attention or mine about Grandpa Ryer is that he was totally blind. And he had the entire Bible in Braille downstairs in his uh, family room down there and got to know a, bi a Braille, you know, it's big, right? Um, and he knew he was going to go blind when he was in his mid uh, years and he went to school for the blind and he was very accomplished. And I think that's what, along with his unique personality and that, uh, he was amazing. Um, he kept a huge garden. I remember being out there with him, watching him weed his garden and couldn't see the hand in front of his face, determining the difference between the plants with his fingers. And then, I'm not kidding, he actually did tune-up work on his wife's car. <laughs> he didn't drive, though. <laughs> but he also, and, and again, I'm, I'm so serious, he had put a bathroom in his basement where there wasn't one before without being able to see his own hands. Um, just amazing. What really sticks with me, when I was about 11 years old, my youngest, the four of us, you know, we always had those E's on the end of our names, Bobby, Marky, Bill, you know, the so on the family, Bobby, Jimmy, Marky, Billy, you know, that's how they all referred to us as, except my youngest brother, Billy, when he got to be five, he was really tight with Grandpa Ryer. And uh, 
he didn't like being called Billy. We didn't know that. And I, one day, Grandpa Ryer took each of my brothers and me aside individually and said, Jim, I want to talk to you. It's like, I mean, the guy was just a little bit below God in my, you know, it's like he wants to talk to just me. He sat down with me and he said, I want you to know that Bill is now five. He's not Billy anymore. He's Bill. Well, <laughs> I've never called him Billy since, you know? The impact of his words to me were just so strong. And he developed cancer shortly after that, and he knew his end was coming. And we had gotten a tape recorder, you know, um, remember when they were about the size of a shoebox? You know, and he said to us, boys, he was over for dinner with his wife, and he said, uh, would you go get that tape recorder? I want to give you something. And of course, we immediately did that, and I remember him saying, is it on? Yeah. And he gave a tribute to each one of us boys and to my parents and what we had meant to him in his and his wife's later years. So powerful, his words very deliberately spoken. And there's so much more to that because words, I think, I'll jump ahead a little bit, are our superpower. Words are so powerful. Let's go way back into Genesis, first chapter. What's the first thing God does after we hear that God's spirit hovered over the waters? Verse 3, Genesis 1, And then God said, Let there be light. And then nothing happened, right? No! The power of the word of God, and then there was light. And so on, and God goes through those days. By the way, just a quick aside. The book of Genesis, the creation story, some try to read that as a science book about the universe, the cosmos, the creation of the earth, and get into lots of debates about how can you have light before you have the sun and all. The book of Genesis, that creation story, is not, in my strong opinion, a science book. It's a theology book. And it's teaching us not about the earth, but about God about a being so powerful, all he has to do is say, let there be light, and it happens. Impact, what a powerful God we have. Dial forward, we get to John's gospel and God coming to us in human form, and in John's gospel, which we heard from today, begins just like Genesis, in the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then we hear Jesus speaking to us through the scriptures, to the people of the day, those powerful words to Andrew, James, Simon, John, follow me. To the cripple, he says, your sins are forgiven. To crowds, love your enemies, love one another. To the Pharisees, love God and love your neighbor. To the demon, be quiet, come out of him. To the leper, be made clean. To the wind and the sea, be still. To those who are poor and meek and in struggle, Blessed are you, and to his disciples, and to you and I, I love you. And those words had such impact, like a lake placid water, rock dropped in, the ripples go out, and 2,000 years later, because of those words, here we are. Wow. And if we go ahead in Genesis from the third verse to the 26th verse in the first chapter, then God says, 
let us now make human beings in our image and in our likeness. And I believe that part of that likeness is that we have been blessed with the power of the word, that we can speak with power. You know this. All of us can recall words that people have said to us and words that we have said that have impact. Just as a quick check on that, how many of you ever heard somebody say, especially if you have children, but you said, <laughs> right? <laughs> and let me say this, the words that we speak and I referenced that earlier because I believe that ability, that power comes from God is our superpower to bring about and to continue the creation that God started in Genesis and that powerful ripple effect of the gospel that Jesus began to continue that in this world today. Of course, we can use that superpower for good or not. But that's our choice. And that's my call to me and to you to do our best to use that gift of the spoken word to tell others that you love them, right? To say those meaningful things that bring about the kingdom of God here today. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages, God and God, light and light, true God, true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father. Ruling all things in one name, for us, slain for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was in the Virgin Mary, and the dead man. For our sakes, was fired by the most part of God. He suffered a death and very glorious, and rose again the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and the hidden right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and as the kingdom will come again. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of the life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is already glorified, who has spoken to the cross. I believe in one Lord, after the Apostolic Church. I confide in baptizing the proper healing of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. In the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring our petition to God. For our Pope and all the bishops, that they may rejoice to teach the commandments of God and lead all people in the ways of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders everywhere may work to end religious persecution and defend the freedoms of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all new graduates, that they may use the knowledge and skills they have acquired to advance God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings upon all mothers, that they may follow Mary's example and enrich the world through their motherly love and generous gifts of life and faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the mothers who are no longer with us, and for all who have died, especially Ken Rothstein and Leroy Schlangen, for whom this Mass is offered, may they and all the faithful departed live forever in the glory of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for our individual intentions, which we now offer to God in silent prayer. For all of these needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. <clears throat> o Lord, listen our petition in the name of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. and sisters and a sacrifice and yours 
may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May our prayer rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offering, so they purified by your graciousness may be confirmed to the mystery and your mystery in might love through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, be quick dear. And with your spirit lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give them to our Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, and during our salvation, all time to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover husband, sacrifices, for with all the order destroyed, the universe is cast down to renew, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. And therefore, we come with Paschal joy, Every land, every people exalting your praise, and even the heavenly power with angelical host sings together in an ending hymn of your glory as they, as they acclaim. All holiness may call it, therefore, this will be prayed by sending down your spirit upon the light of the form, so that they may become for us the body of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the time he was betrayed and entered willingly, he took his passion, he took bread, gave him things, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper we send it, he took the chalice, one more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this. All of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice in my blood, the blood of the Nunet and my covenant, which is proud for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Your faith. We will pray the Lord, and will bless your until you come memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, our precious life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have kept us worthy to be in your presence and minister through you. Home you prepare the partaking of the body and the blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, 
in Patrick our vision of the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of that resurrection, and all who have died your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coed in our life, and may Christ glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and within and in him, O God, O Mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and all the yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and form the divine tissue we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, but help us of your mercy. We may be always free from sins and safe from all distress, as we await our blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, it has so apostle, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look on our sins, but at the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with who you will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord you always. And with your spirit. Please offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord have mercy. Really that you stand to remember. But when the word, my soul shall be
Let us pray. Almighty, heaven living God, who restore us in eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruit in these Paschal sacraments, and pour into our hearts the strength and this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. In honor of Mother's Day, the Knights of Columbus is passing out lapel roses at the entrances. It would be nice to see everybody as they leave have a lapel rose on. Also, anybody has any questions or any interest in joining the Knights, talk to me. Thank you. Now to have special blessing for the mother because it's a mother day and congratulations for his mother and may God bless every mother in the world, especially in our parish. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, will in his great kindness and redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with the, his blessings. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of a life. Amen. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathering in this day carry away with you the gift of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel with your lives. Thanks be to God. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruined souls. Amen. Amen.